Wow, blessings to you all. Thank you for coming together and we thank you. We welcome you who are watching this live stream and we want to welcome you. I hope that this will uh, bless your hearts today. I want to especially welcome our, our participants from different part of the world. Uh, blessings to you. I want to uh, welcome Apostle Fran from USA. We have Karen from Sydney, Australia. We welcome Lawrence from Canberra, Australia. We welcome you, Pastor Len from Fiji, Martin from Canberra, Australia. We welcome Erwin. Erwin's coming on board soon. We want to welcome uh, Gary, a missionary in Kenya, Tien from Canberra, Tilly from Christchurch, and of course myself from Canberra, Embassy of Hope. I want to say that I sincerely honour each one of you. I honour your position, your place in the kingdom of God. I honor your mandate in the kingdom of God. And I just want to say welcome. This has been really excited. I'm looking forward to, to hear what God is uh, putting in your hearts and, and our hearts as we come together. This live stream is a gathering of those that I have known uh, well for, for a number of years, personally for some times. I know that you are sons, sons of God, and I know that you are people who hear from the Lord. So this is why we're having this gathering. We're basically coming together to hear from each of you. I know that you have your ministries, your group, your churches, uh, however God is, however you serve God. And this uh, program is that we'll come together. I just want to and ask each of you to, to maybe um, share with us and our listeners what you feel yourself personally and your group, your ministry and your church, what you sense God is doing right now because uh, we are basing this uh, with um, uh, 1 Chronicles 12.32. It speaks about the sons of Issachar, the children of Issachar who knew the time and seasons of God. And I know that you are sons of God who know the times and seasons of God. So here we are. We're just going to come and hear what God is saying. Uh, we would love to for you to share with those who are watching and with myself what you're sensing God is saying. If you have a group, what, what God is saying to your group, your ministry, uh, and how you're serving God. So here we go. This is my first time and we're going to love it and we're going to enjoy it. So we're going to relax. We're going to start with, who do we start with? Pastor Len from Fiji. What is God's, what are you hearing from God in this time and season? Would you share with us? Thank you so much. Um, um, we are living in a time and a season where we realize that things are shifting very quickly and we are living in a, a new era uh, and the new season we are in, we must act immediately and the time to act as believers globally as sons and uh, sons of God, non-gender word, the time to act is now. We don't have much time. I always say this, that we're living in a borrowed time. The world system is uh, working very, very hard to implement the one world order. And what we have seen in the last few months, the beginning of the year 2020 is truly a dress rehearsal before the one world order arrive. And I believe this is the finest moment for every believer living on this planet Earth. Sons and daughters must act, and the sons of Issachar must act and know the times and the season we are in. And we must discern the moment and the season we are in now, and we must preach the gospel like never before. There is a time to preach, and we must use every excess uh, available that we can uh, have right now every media that is very accessible right now to influence men and women around the globe in a godly way and this is our season and i believe this season 
is a season of productivity like never before. Not only that, but it's a season also that new things have been birthed, not only in the realm of the spirit, but also are starting to be manifested in the, soup, in the natural realm like never before. Microphone, Noah. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm getting there. I'm learning. Tilly, what is God saying to Christ Church, New Zealand? What are you hearing from the Lord in this season? Hi, everyone. Um, this season is the season of all season that we have. Um, it's a special season right now of God's glory and acceleration. And I, I felt that um, looking at all the circumstances at the same time, there is a moment of God in acceleration. Even the babies, they just uh, receive Christ as their Savior. They move in acceleration and equip and preach the word. And um, this is a, we must uh, simply must process the spirit of excellence. It's the, it's the spirit of God that boring upon the sons and daughters who obedience and have good heart. As we read um, 1 Corinthians 12, 38, the sons of Issachar, they all have good heart to support David. And I, I felt like uh, this season, uh, there is a uh, God is hand picking the one that are longing for his word to fulfill and focus to the plans of God to accomplish. And there is a, a, a blessing, rewarding is come at the same time we move. There is a rewarding to us, not only to our family, our ministry, and full of Christ. Issachar um, is the fifth daughter of Leah. And the number five, as speak of Christ. And we are more in grace of God right now. Um, we are, there are sons and daughters of God. They are hungry for a change, hungry for transformation. And also the front runner who called people to the mountains, the front runner who called people to equip and empower and build up, not only to tearing down walls and stronghold, but to build up people in Christ. And this is our season. Um, we, I, I call for new ears to hear and new eyes to, 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 to see so we can see further beyond what God is about to do. Amen. Amen. Sounds like it's all action. Sounds like it's all action. Time for action. Time for action. That's wonderful. Yay, 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 yay. Hallelujah. Lawrence, Brother Lawrence, would you share what God's been saying to you or maybe you and your group? Okay, I'll just give you a small nutshell because there's so many prongs that he's working on, so many avenues. With this time that we're in worldwide, where everyone's either looking forward to a one world system or fearful of a one world system. Uh, one of the messages we received is from our King that 
there is a system, his system, that he wants to set up and we should be looking for a one world system, his system. This is a system that he is going to bring in through his glorious ones. Those he's raising up, the sons who are totally committed to him. Now these mm. we've been told will only be a small number because it requires so much dedication and commitment. So our hearts have to be right. Our commitment has to be absolute and total. <clears throat> and our message has to be align with heaven, align with the heart of the king, align with father's plans and being about his business. Mm. And the sons of Issachar are the ones who hear from the throne. That's the modern day Issachar sons, not the ones from the Old Testament. But the modern day Issachars hear from the throne. That's their telecommunication on a 24 7 basis. And they know what's going on. And if they're not sure, they ask and they get answers to their questions. But at the same time, they're not hiding away somewhere afraid. They're actually out amongst the people. They are listening and they are watching, they are assessing, they are discerning. And when people from the general public have questions, they know who to go to because these people, these sons know what's going on. They know who holds the future, they know about the future and they know about circumstances currently. So this is one of the key points. There is a one world government coming in parallel to the enemy's world system but it's the system that we are part of and we have to commit ourselves to as sons. That'll do me for now. <laughs> yes, amen, amen. New world system of the kingdom of God, amen. Where his responsible sons and daughters will rise up and only have eyes for the commander ready to go ready to strike and ready to move as he says to go amen love that oh gary what's been happening in kenya what are you hearing in kenya well i've seen in the church that there has been a breakdown in faithfulness and that's this has resulted in people being distracted by the world but I see now that there's a remnant a small handful of young pastors that are trying to straighten up their congregations to get their congregations back in line with the will of God and they're doing this by leading exemplary lives themselves. Mm. And this is what is essential, is that instead of us just preaching the gospel of Jesus, we have to be the gospel of Jesus. We have to lead by example like Jesus did. And this is something that many ministers have failed to do I've seen where they have been unfaithful in their marriages and unfaithful in their materialism where some have hoarded and not actually been like the early church where they have the early church supported the poor supported the weak and the destitute but this there is a shift here now where people are more tending to outreach and touch those destitute, touch the homeless, visit the hospitals and visit the prisons. And this is where the heart of Jesus was with those that were trapped. And slowly there's a shift that there has to be a greater shift where instead of us just saying, we have to start doing. We have to be more active. We have to be Christ to the nations. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That is the gospel, isn't it? The heart of Jesus and be like Jesus. I, I really feel that in this uh, time and season, um, 
a greater love, the most excellent way. It's what's so needed now. And so in our action, as uh, the as you were saying, Pastor Lynn, and, and all together you've been saying that um, it's time for action. It's time to hear and go and do. And, and, and that is to um, go back, go back to the simplicity of the gospel, to love, to cater, to, to, to meet those needs. Can I just, um, can I just ask uh, Apostle Fran, if you could just add to those, um, I know you've been speaking about, um, what God is saying right now. Could you, uh, add to that? And we'll come back to you as well. You want me to add now? Okay. Amen. We, yes. We thank God again for everyone, uh, this evening, uh, being with us. And I just want to, um, um, if I can just go back to the verse that um, that we've all been, you know, uh, talking about tonight. First uh, Chronicles 12 and 32 of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. I believe that in this hour that this is most absolutely the season for Issachar's. Um, we need to have people who know what God is saying. Um, and, and when we have to have those that God is raising up in this hour who know what the Lord is saying, it will be, and we're going to see, just as we see it in the scripture, their brethren were at their command. We will no longer, and I believe that this is the season that we're in, that God has allowed us to transition because there's been so many voices and so many uh, uh, people who have, purported to speak for God when in essence their their motives was something other. And I believe that we're in a season now where God is raising up voices that his people are going to follow because of the fact that they are actually speaking for God. These are not people who are going to be speaking their own mind. They're not going to be speaking their own agendas. They're not going to be, you know, trying to do things just to glorify flesh. This is going to be what we see, you know what I'm saying, where God raises up a people that will go forth and we will follow the voice of those who speak on God's behalf. One of the things that um, we look at in the scripture, wherever uh, Israel had to move, there were three tribes that went ahead. And it was Judah that went forth and praised first, Issachar, who was able to discern, and then also Zebulun, which was the financiers. And I believe that that is the spirit that is going to uh, cause us to be able to go into the things of God in the season, that we're going to see that we're not going to move on our own as we move into the things that God has promised us in this season, uh, even though there may be difficulty around us, the, the major thing that is going to be uh, uh, very paramount for us as people of God is that we remain in a posture of praise, that as we go forth and do what God has called us to do, that we go forth in praise and that we walk in discerning, being able to know what we should do, being able to know how we should move, being able to know when we should move and when we should not move, and that God is going to supply our needs as we go forth. It's not going to be by our own doing, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We will be able to fulfill the assignment that God has for us because those three things are going to be the prerequisites for the move of God. Number one, to praise. Number two, to be able to discern. And number three, to be able to have God carry us through and make the way. We will see Jehovah Jireh in this season. We will see it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. And I really feel that this is a time as the sons of, I really sense this. I know that when God had, um, put in my heart to put this together. I had no idea. I had no idea of a theme. I had no idea how, what he wanted uh, to do, but he just dropped a thought in my in my mind, in my heart, sons of Issachar. And so here we are, here are the sons of Issachar. He is the sons of God who hear and know the timing of God. I really sense from, uh, from the spirit too, that there is such a, 
a generation of Christians, uh, believers that have been believing for a very long time and are looking to these people, the sons of Issachar. They are looking to these uh, are like us. There are many more out there and many more that are hidden. But now is a real, a real time that God is wanting to expose these sons of God who really know and, um, and, and understand the timing of God. I also got from the Lord... I was asking the Lord, Lord, who do I invite to come to this uh, meeting? And he said to me, you will not call the ones that are already out there with the prophet uh, title. You will not call the ones that are already so known, but I will bring to you the people that he knows, that he has spoken to and that they have heard his voice. And and that's what he said, call these ones. And I really believe that as we are coming forth, as we hear as uh, like um, the sons of Issachar, as more people will hear the voice of God and move forward, there is a great generation that are looking for these ones, these remnant that you have all been mentioning before. They're looking. I mean, just the last few days, I've had uh, leaders uh, of ministries and churches calling me, uh, Noah, are you having a Zoom? Are you doing a Zoom? Please let me know. And I'm thinking, no, I haven't got anything organized. And they're hanging there like uh, the, 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 the leaders are, the leaders of, of churches are looking for directions. And, and I really believe that in these times, it's no longer the leader of a church or leader of a building or leader of a ministry. God, even though that they are still there, but God is now raising up the hidden ones that he had been fellowshipping with them in the secret place that they know their heart, they have been faithful, they have been uh, in the struggle of being alone, uh, but being alone with God. But this is our time. This is the time that God is calling this uh, forward. Time to act. Hallelujah. So. You'll have to ask again, Noah. Yeah, we didn't hear you. You were muted. The whole time? <laughs> yes. no, just who you asked then. Okay. Uh, dear Tien, would you like to share what God has been speaking to you? Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, since um, 2016, God has given me many words. Uh, for example, like new season, breakthrough, new ground, acceleration, declaring, decreeing. And I can now see that we are in the time for all of these to come to pass. Um, and as we know, 2020 has so far unfolded to us and we know that we need God's divine intervention more than ever. Um, I have received God messages over the years and especially this year and i just want to thank for the opportunity to share it to the body of christ because i feel that god has provided us with some strategies for this time um and what i'm about to share with you it comes from the message from god that i scribed and uh it, it there are the following themes that you will hear it's to do with mouth to do with praying declaring decreeing breakthrough harvest and guess what abundance and so early in this year god gave me the following message and first one is about the decade of the mouth um before leading up to february he has been telling me much about me needing to pray and i kept hearing that message throughout the year and i i wasn't very obedient to that so in february when he said it again i realized that I need to pay attention. So this is what he said. This is God's message. I desire that you pray unceasingly. And the way that you can do this is to pray in the spirit. I desire that you exercise this gift as much as you are willing to, so that you let my spirit pray through you. Therefore, I say, whoever has this gift, I encourage you to use it. And whoever desires this gift, seek this gift now this is the decade that i will empower your mouth more than ever 
victory is in your mouth. If you want victory to be assured, then know that it is in your mouth. Open your mouth and I will fill it. Your speech will activate my kingdom, my will. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks and you will see the fruit of your mouth. Purify your heart because the heart and the mouth connection is paramount in this decade. Therefore, take my word. This is also the decade of increase and not decrease, of dreams realized, promises fulfilled, desires guaranteed, and hope accomplished. I say to you that 2020 is a decade known as the Roaring Twenties, for the Lion of Judah is roaring and you are to roar with me. And the second message he gave me was this. He's talking about positioning ourselves at the right time gate because we are the gate as well. So you are commissioned to take back the high places. Therefore, you are to position yourselves at the gate of the right time or the gate of the critical time or the gate of the ripeness of time. You are in the Kairos time, a time that will have many opportunities for action. We talked about action before. So position yourself well. Also, I'm telling you that you are the gates where many who find these gates will find light and life because you are the gates leading into the light, life and truth. The question I want to put before you is, how do you help my people to find the way to the gates? And the third revelation message that God gave me was this. It's about seeds. And these seeds here is about God's revelation, provisions, promises, visions, and or dreams. Okay. And this is his message. In the past, some of the seeds that I gave you were crushed, trampled, thrown away, or forgotten. And some were sown, but did not germinate because they were ruined, destroyed, delayed or mistimed. Now I am restoring to you these seeds and they will germinate and sprout into healthy plants, even in the land that looks barren, parched or destroyed by fire. It will look like the land that is transitioning from winter into spring. When you see the assault of the enemies, remember the seeds that are in your hands. They are in your hands because I here have given them to you. Therefore, say what heavens want you to say so that those seeds in your hand will be sown and you will reap the harvest of the fruit of the seeds. Your speech activates my kingdom, my will. But even so, expect that the heat will be greatly turned up. However, this heat will also greatly accelerate the germination of the seeds. And like all seeds that germinate, they will need the sun and they will also reach toward the sun. And for most, most of us here, or some of us are here, you probably remember the bushfire that ravaged Australia early this year. And now you know that the vegetation is all regenerating at the moment. So God used that illustration to tell me the heat is necessary. I have made you kings and priests unto me, and you shall reign on the earth. So as your high priest, the great I am, I'm calling you to take your role as priests to intervene on the earth. I call you to legislate in the heavenlies on behalf of your nations, your church and your families. As you issue decrees, you release power, justice, revelation, wisdom, insight, righteousness, peace and order on earth and my mercy and my divine intervention will be invoked on earth. My angelic beings will also be released. I remind you that you have been given full power and authority to see my will released on earth. You are clothed in my royal robes for such a time as this. Victory is assured you. My strategy for you in declaring my kingdom on earth requires you to walk in love, humility, trust and obedience. Know who you are in me and that you are mandated by me to reign on earth as righteous priests, kings and legislators. You will face opposition, 
challenges and even discouragement as you pursue living as kingdom people. Do not allow timidity, doubt, distrust, or a religious mindset to disqualify you. Allow nothing to hold you back and stop you from speaking out what I put in your heart. Walk in my resurrection power in situations that seem hopeless or dead. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks and you will see the fruit of your mouth. In speaking life, you will harvest the fruit of life. In speaking death, you will reap death. Nothing new about it. So open your mouth wide and I will feel it. I will fill you with words that you need when you pray, when you decree. Your speech will activate my kingdom. Remember that no weapons form against you shall prosper. And for every tongue that rises against you, it is your position, your right, and your responsibility to condemn it. Be bold and courageous, dare to speak out, and dare to act and decree. For I am bigger than all the opposition that is being released in full force around you. Your victory is assured. And that's the end of the message that he gave me to share with you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. What a package that is. Thank you, Jesus. Does anyone want to add to that? Just if, if, uh, while Tien was speaking and something was stirring in your heart and your spirit, um, feel free to. I was trying to hold it. I was waiting to see if somebody was going to say something. <laughs> You go ahead and listen when she was talking and and she's talking about this being the decade of the mouth that absolutely is and especially when we're talking about this being this Hebrew year that this is the decade of the pay and so pay being the Hebrew letter uh and for the number 80. You know what I'm saying? We're in the 80s, in the Hebrew year, and this is absolutely, and we were saying, I actually had a conversation um, that um, with, with my son as we were coming into 2020 and we were talking about the fact that this was definitely the roaring 20s um, and that, that even that spirit of decadence that was in the 20s. We see that like in 1920 and in, in, in the decade of the 20s, we see that even now um, here in 2020 as we entered into 2020. And, uh, you know, just wanted to go back to to the to that pay to that that this being the decade of the mouth when we first came into this and I was we were sharing uh, on a previous broadcast about how this last year you know this 2020 this 5780 before we crossed over into 5781 in the hebrew year we were in this reset god brought us into a reset everything that happened last year or we're saying last year now because we're in a new hebrew year so even though we're still in 2020 we're talking last year now and so um the Lord brought us into a reset where we, God reset everything. We, and we shared that as we came into 2020, as we came, well, before 2020 came in and as we were in 5780, uh, we were looking at the things that the Lord was saying. And God said that in this season, we would see things that we had never seen. We would hear things that we had never heard. You know what I'm saying? In the beginning of this year. And so those things have come to pass and how our foundations, our very foundations would be tested. And that this was the season for strong leaders. The the Hebrew alphabet, when we look at the Hebrew alphabet, it is um, there's an Aleph in the pay when you look at the 80. And so that Aleph is strong, would, would stand for a strong leader. And that pay is for the mouth. And so we saw that we needed strength in this year. We needed we needed God to stand up in us, you know, and any of us that were were, you know, have lost their strength, had not been praying like they were supposed to, had not been in the word. This was a season to strengthen yourself, to, to really hunker down and strengthen your foundation and allow God to reset you. And so now that God has brought us to that reset, 
where everything has been reset in our governments, in our, you know, countries, in our cities, in our villages, everything has been reset. And so now God is bringing us, this is what I was saying, we are come to this Issachar, when you were talking about this Issachar, uh, this anointing for Issachar, because now that we are in this 81, this 5781, that changed everything. So now we are in the Pei, Lamed, and Aleph, which is the three of them together is that it is the strong leader. It is one who guides and directs. That is the spirit of Issachar. We got to have the spirit of Issachar, which is for us, that's Holy Spirit. We need, that's what is that's what Issachar operated in the Holy Spirit. We need Holy Spirit. And we need to be able to speak what does have the Lord. This is not the hour for us to shriek back and not declare what God is saying. And and Tien talked about making decrees and you know what I'm saying, things of that nature. We are going to have to prophesy to our circumstances and our situations. We shall have whatsoever things we say if we open our mouth and say them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Anyone else to add? Wow. Yeah, I'll add, I'll add something there if I may. Uh, one Go of the ahead, important Lawrence. Things, one of the important things of when we hear from the Spirit, when you hear from the throne, is that we are spoken to in our own lingo. If we put aside our desire to hear in biblical phraseology, we'll actually hear him speak to us uh, in our own language, in our own idioms. And one of the idioms that he spoke to Tien was Roaring Twenties. Now for Australia, it has a different concept than it may elsewhere around the world. There is a stretch of ocean below Australia in, in the Great Southern Bight called the Roaring Twenties. It's a place of extreme danger. We've lost many boats there. And you, if you've watched the Sydney to Hobart yacht race in the past, when we lose our yachts and our sailors drown, it's because they're going from the, the coast of Australia to Tasmania across the Roaring Twenties. So Roaring Forties, Roaring Twenties, all these have an idea about turmoil great waves of opposition and as jesus spoke to those on the boat on the lake we're going to have to do the same thing in our in our time and in our nation mm. i just gotta say oh we <laughs> whoa 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 hallelujah wow it's almost like, um, I don't know, I don't want to speak. <laughs> so much to take in, so much that the Father is saying. Martin, would you like to share what God has been saying to you, your group? What are you sensing, the Lord? Yeah, sure. Well, we've, we've been hearing about agendas and, and One World Order and uh, back in 2017, I was learning about Agenda 21 and then um, Donald Trump got elected and our gen Agenda 21 is the uh, One World Order agenda and Donald Trump got elected and that's why we saw all the upset, why they want to oust him because... Uh, Agenda 21 ended up being moved now to Agenda 30, I think you'll find it is. Great upset for the One World Order. A few weeks ago, I was uh, watching a little video uh, put together by somebody about um, comments of the One World Order that this coronavirus is a, a reset time, an opportunity to reset, they said. Well, you know, um, I spoke some time before and, and said, um, no, no, uh, right back when we had this coronavirus first hit us, it's God who's doing the resetting. God is doing the resetting in us. Tien's just, just spelled it all out for us, all the, the uh, detail um, of that reset, because what we're being uh, brought into is um, that, um, that divine reset, which, which uh, brings us up a level where the, the, uh, the spirit and the word 
come together. That's which uh, Smith Wigglesworth, uh, spoke, Wigglesworth spoke of many, many years ago, the spirit and the word coming together. And that's when, when we see things um, really change. And so uh, talking about the gates, you know, like we, we, through the divine reset, set the agenda for the world, not Agenda 21, not Agenda 30, not the One World Order. That, that may come sometime when we're taken from the earth, but right now, God is bringing us as the sons of God into that place where we take up our authority and, and put the world in order and see the revival that, that, that we keep um, um, talking about. And, um, you know, God's got that on his agenda. That's on God's agenda is revival. God's got a, a whole world to bring in a whole kingdom to harvest. He said, pray for the harvesters. Why? Because the, the fields are white for the, for the um, harvest. And uh, so, yes, we're going to see this harvest. We're going to see it uh, come to fruition because that's God's intention. He put us on the earth to be um, his bride and he doesn't want to see us going into hell. That was never his intention. And so through all this turmoil, God once again is bringing us to a place where we're going to, you know, uh, shine, rise and shine um, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon the earth. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone else want to add to that? What Martin was just saying? You're welcome. Okay, I'll go. Uh, one of the things that I felt when um, the lockdown first began was I felt that um, actually I was just so excited, you know, that the building was closed. Uh, you know, some other people might think that I'm crazy. Those who are watching might think, oh, what are you talking about? Don't you love Jesus? And I thought, yeah, I really love him. I go in the secret place and, and I'll find him there. And just a few weeks before that, I was uh, in a gathering where we were praying, um, we were praying for revival and just this intercession was coming out of my spirit. Uh, I was seeing the church, uh, the church people, Christians in the in a building and I was actually praying, God, scatter them, scatter them, get them out, get them out, get them out. And I was, I was almost like I was... Uh, with this uh, stick or broom or something like get out of here get out of here and not long after that uh, there was a, a lockdown and and well people couldn't go in the building anymore and I really was so grateful to God because God God did not initiate this uh, virus of course we know that but God has promised that you will turn all things to good for those who love him and so what I really sense in my spirit as the the building was uh close and we weren't able to go back the the the, the Christians the believers of Jesus Christ were forced in a way to to come back to Jesus to 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 go back and lock yourself in the secret room and find God where is God it's almost like those people on the boat where is Jesus you know did, didn't he see can't he see that there's a storm and uh believers have been in that place you know where is Jesus can't he see that they've locked up the building and we can't go in and and I'm really uh excited because I felt God was just as the scattering was happening, people were looking, where can I go? Where can I go to find the Lord? But the Lord was really uh, um, collecting and gathering them to himself. And so I really feel that, uh, I, I felt that at that time as God was rebirthing his church. I felt that uh, during that time of Pentecost, is that God was rebirthing his church, that the church was being born again again because that now we have come into a close fellowship with god we are coming with our maker and we're being one with him and out of that being one with him we are coming together as one one with one another one with him one with one another and we be, we're coming together in that one order if you will say under under the, the the leadership of the of the holy spirit under the leadership of the good shepherd himself and so i find now uh, there's so many people so many christians are, are still lost even though that we can go back to the building now they are still don't know what they're doing there's that i see 
in the spirit that are people in the building now that are sitting there and the service as it used to be are happening and nothing is going on in the spirit it's just like going from one ear to another and my heart and our prayer is that the people will realize that god has shifted things no longer we do it that way i'm not saying that yeah we, we, we stop going to the building yeah but god is shifted and so my prayer is that we come into uh, a place uh, uh and i really see this for the sons of issachar that god is raising up his sons just like as he's spoken and he declared at the end it's time that we come and speak these things hey you'll be standing there near the uh near the river be healed but it's not there it's shifted and so now my heart is really that that god will raise up more sons that hear what god is saying so that we can bring salvation to the believers who are standing in the building out the building with leaders who the leaders to, uh like i was saying earlier the leaders calling me uh I, I, have you got a zoom they don't know what they're doing so my encouragement is that those who are listening to this uh live stream hear the word of god and use your mouth god will give you the words use your mouth it's the ear of the mouth speak it declare it and walk in it in jesus mighty name hallelujah i'm going to ask dear karen karen what have you been hearing from the lord Uh, first of all, thank you, and thank you so much for having me with you today. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. So, what I'm going to share with you today is something that I've been carrying with the Lord since the 5th of April this year. And um, on the 5th of April, the Lord um, spoke to me one morning, and he said to me, it's a new day dawning. And so we've all heard that expression before. And, um, so I asked him more. I said, what do you actually mean to you? To you? What does that mean? And he immediately spoke to me and said, that is the dawning age. And this is what he, he showed me in this year, 2020. We are in a massive transition from the beginning of this year, even up to this um, now, the transitioning from the old into the new. And all of you have been alluding to this. And because this is a new season in God, actually it's more a new era for the church. And what God has done is that with um, it, we have had to come aside from God. We had to stop from our normal activity. And particularly, we couldn't go to church anymore. We couldn't do things as we normally did. But as part of us transitioning from what we knew and how familiar we were with everything else into the kingdom age of waters in a way we've never walked that way before it's a brand new thing in God you've been using different words like reset and that sort of thing but in the vision God showed me the word in and this is exactly what he is doing divine violation in every one of us not just us individuals um, all across the whole body of Christ. Recalibration means that except for the working machine that has to do a certain job, to recalibrate means that it's brought back to proper alignment. It's brought back into the original working condition. And when a machine is worked for a while, it does do something. It's, you know, we're not deliberately doing that, but it has and it has to be celebrated again. And so we're in this season where God is calibrating us, he's realigning us according to the blueprint of each one of our lives. And on a blueprint, you will see that there's different aspects. There's this part of the building, 
things in that. And at different times in our lives and seasons, he puts his finger on a certain part and says, this is the time for this stage of your life. And he's doing that with the blueprint for each one of our lives at this time. And he brings it back into an alignment so that when something is recovered, it's ready for action. It's ready to launch out and it's going to be put alignment to do the good thing. And so we're in this incredible season where we're going to come to him and, um, you know, the verses that God gave me in relation to this is in Philippians 3, 16. It's where um, Paul talks about um, basically how great he was. You know, he was the best Pharisee. He did this, he did that. He, you know, he had so much to boast about. But in this season, you know, this is how God has led me, that he wants me to lay down everything of my life. Well, I've done, awesome, I've done awesome things. I've seen revivals in nations. There's so many things. I've walked to this stage. But it, what's been in the past is not going to be in the past. And so there's like a laying down just like Paul did. It all of the past as if it was dung, it was rubbish. That he may take a hold of the blueprint of God and that he would go forward. In this season now, as we allow ourselves to be recalibrated, this is the time where we're going to get the new direction. We're going to get the new beginning. A lot of people are the new beginning. We're going to get our new assignments. We're going to get keys and strategies. See, with the sun, they not only knew the times and the seasons, but they also knew what to do. And this is what we to listening to God, not be in a hurry to rush up and do what we've always done. But to everything God and let recalibration take place if that's what's needed. Allow him to train us into the new. We have to be listening. We have to have those ears. And for some of us, maybe most, it's not going to be exactly what we've been doing or what we've been used to. It is the unchecked But we all have to have a listening ear. And if we're asked by the Lord this season, then we should be willing to do that. He may give it back with new direction or strategies and all that type of thing or it's maybe a time for so, so this is the word that I've been carrying for all of these I'm grateful, Lord that I'm able to share this with everyone today I across the world have been going through similar things and similar words I've heard so all I can do is encourage each and every one of us to yield in full surrender to him. let him do what he needs to do. Let him talk to us about the things he needs to talk about and to lay things down, let it be, because now's the time in this great transition that he's resetting us, as some said. He's doing that deep work so that we're, we're ready as soon as he gives us the go-ahead to do that. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Karen. Mm. I've been hearing the same. I, I have a sense that all of us here that are meeting today have been hearing that too. So it's good to have it confirmed, hearing it from another son, from another daughter of God speaking the same. Wow. Is anyone else want to, to add to that? Anyone else want to add anything? Yes, I, I just um, love to add, you know, he's talk, she's been talking about the uh, reset, 
and recalibrate the alignment uh, to to the to the original states. He's talking about the blueprint, and I really believe that you know what has happened uh, from the year of the mouth to this new year, two thousand five seven eight one. The Lord has surely reset the mode of doing things, even the culture of the day. God is resetting the culture because we have been swayed away a lot from our original setting from day one when when God made us into the, his likeness and in, into, in his image so that we can be fruitful and multiply. And the Lord is now, you know, uh, uh, cause us to stand still for a while so that we can, uh, as you've said already, uh, Apostle uh, Ilinganoa, that we have to go back into our closet. We have to go back into our inner chamber. We have to go back into those places where we where we open ourselves into the presence of God. Because the moment we come into the presence, there is nothing that is hindered. His light shines on us and we are exposed into the presence. And that is why when we come into the presence, he, he, he starts to realign us and he starts to shape us. He starts to mold us and, 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 and recalibrate us to, to go back to our original design, to go back to our original structures. And that is exactly what God is doing right now globally. It's a reset, but it's said to say some are, are still holding on to the past. They are still holding on, excuse me, to the structures of how they normally do things in the past. But God is saying, shift, sons, shift, shift to the new thing. But we can only do, start to shift when we avail ourselves and go back to that place of intimacy and rest in that place and hear from that place of rest, the position of rest, the seated place of the Father. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Len. Absolutely. Tilly, you want to say something? There is a lot of um, really, really good word from the Father and very powerful that breathe out from all of you. And we... Uh, Resetting and a decree and declare it's it's happening right now. And um, for COVID, what is in my heart is a huge alarm to bring the parents and their kids and each family to bring in their own home to breathe out the worship and praises to God and. What I noticed on this season, the sons and daughters of God, when they call upon the face creation's response, the natural response because of the authority that God already given us to speak and declare and decree. And I, to be honest, this that's what I say, this season is different out of all season because I've seen a lot of miracles. And even here in Christ Church, there was a, a, a guy who was in prison and he came visit our church. Right now there is a door open to him to walk into the prison to get whoever coming out and he make a home for them and bring them to church. And right now there are seven boys. That's what I say before. The, the 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 people and whoever will get saved now they will come so fast running to god in a celebration and in breakthrough because this the glory of god is moving upon his sons and daughters and it's the holy spirit and god i, I what is my goal right now is to please, we can do anything, but not all the things can bless, please our God. Our aim is to please him for what we do for God's kingdom. And all the words from you, mighty servants of God, I confirm it from here. 
and we are hungry for his glory, his fire, his word, everything about God. So when we walk in obedience, there is no doubt when we walk in, people, people, people will get healed. That's my, that's my heart. People will get healed and delivered. God is looking for the ones who carry his glory and carry his heart. And I believe, uh, like I, I, I said before, at the first Chronicle 1238, there were a multitude of people who have really good heart. And only those who have good heart, they connected. Look at this networking. And we minister out to four corners of the world and the gospel will go there. The gospel will go there, set people free. And not only we decree and declare, and we remind God his word. This week was a battle uh, for my family because of my nephew. He was on the grave, but he's alive now because of God. And when we pray, we remind him, God is in Jeremiah 33, free. Go to me and I will answer you. Then I say, God, you say, go to you and you will answer us. And you will show us things that we haven't seen before. So this is a season. Creation will respond to us. The nature will respond to us when we call things to come. Even his blessing, whatever your desire, God will do it for you. And whoever is listening right now, this is your time. If you are a good listener, you have to use this word. All the word from his servant. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Tilly. Hallelujah. I think... Um... I think I sense a spirit from the spirit of God that there's a gift of the Holy Spirit is flowing right now. So if, if the Lord is putting, so let, let's minister to those who are listening. Uh, and also at the same time, um, while we were sharing what we sense the Lord had put in our hearts, and if you feel a prayer coming out that we pray for those things, I think we can... Uh, uh, going towards the end of our program, we can start praying for those things that we are seeing and praying for the things that, that we feel that God is wanting to align according to his blueprint. But I, I'm sensing that there's uh, uh, a gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's minister to those who are listening now. If God is giving you a word of knowledge, word of um, exhortation, whatever God speak it. Just like Tian was saying, just like we're all saying, let's do it now. Time for action. Hallelujah. Mm. May I speak? Yeah. Um, I just sense that there's a, there's a great need among all of you out there. Um, to really know what is the thing that I must do now. And I just sense the Lord is saying to you that uh, if you can go away with one thing for today, from today is I want you to know that intimacy with me is very important. It's almost like an umbrella that is over all things. When you get intimate with me, you will hear me better and you will know what you need to do. And your spirit will rise up within you and will take hold of what I want you to do. And timidity, fear will have its place. It will not take over you. But you must spend time in my presence because in my presence, there's an exchange. My character will be your character. My word will become your word. My spirit will become yours. It's almost like there's an exchange that you can't help it, but it will happen. Don't let your inner voice or a voice from any on outside of you to tell you that this is not an important time. It's the most important time that you can do now because if there's so much that confuse you and your mind is, uh, is not clear, just remember, draw away, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. That's what the word says. But sometimes you must make that decision. So... I would like to pray for you now, Heavenly Father. I want to thank you for your word. 
I thank you, Father, that you always have a way to draw your people to you. You know all our needs. You know all our weaknesses, Lord. But it never stops you from loving us and draw us to you, Father. So I pray right now for my brothers and sisters, and even for myself, Lord, that, Lord, draw us and help us to be discerned of your voice. The drawing that you're calling us will become so so clear, so intense in us that the only way we could stop it from becoming so loud in us is to just to draw away. Because I know you have a way to get our attention, Lord. You have done it for me. And I ask that you do it for my brothers and sisters. And you will do in such a way, Father God, that we find that the time with you is the best time that we invest ourselves in. And I thank you, Lord, as you promised, it shall be done according to your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Does anyone here have a yes, word for me? That um, I can share. Um. I, I just feel a of many people, many of the people um, a cry for our children that walking in the ways of God, they they're not walking the way that even up. And I just feel the encouragement from the Lord is the uttermost. Don't look at where you now, what paths they're going in, he knows how to he knows how to bring them into their destinies. Do it. He knows the cry of our heart, and not to be down. To him. He is. He will never betray his regardless promises that he has made to, towards our how young they are, I just feel the spirit of all the people who are listening, that your children and God will bring them back to their destiny. So I just want to thank you. Your heart, your heart, the cross of your people, those who are in ministry and your servants, and many who are just lovers of you and want to put your hand for their lives, but their children are here, there, and they've, the way they've gone after the things of this world or their company, whatever it may be. Father, we thank you for your encouragement. We thank you that you will bring into their destinies and you will raise them up. The Davids, the Esthers, all the great and mighty ones, bring them back place into your kingdom for this time. We give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you for the great promise which will never ever fail in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, shut up, Messiah. I just want to speak to whoever, um, to those that are watching, whatever time zone that you may be in. And some of these things may not make any sense to you, some of the things that we are saying. Um, and it seems like some of the things that we may be saying is, you know, that it may be going over your head because we're talking about God moving in his season, in his Kairos moments, and all of these things about uh what we see God doing in the church. And so I want to speak to you if you don't understand what it is that is being said on today, uh, whatever time it is, this morning, this evening, 
uh, this afternoon, wherever your time zone is, I want to encourage you to make an altar right where you are. You can kneel by your bedside. You don't even have to kneel. You can sit in your easy chair, wherever you are, make your altar right where you are. And if you don't know who Jesus is and none of this makes any sense to you, all that you know is, is that life has been happening and the things that you are hearing is scaring the daylights out of you. So today I want to tell you that there is hope in Jesus, that there is peace in Jesus and that he is God who will be with you. He is Emmanuel. So no matter what it is that you are facing, no matter what it is that you are going through, no matter what it is that has been happening around you, whether it be situations with coronavirus or whether it's things that is happening in your government or it's fears of a one world order or whatever those things might be, listen to me. The Bible says you can cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. There is nothing that God is not concerned about. So you can make your altar wherever you are. And we want to pray with you today, tonight, this morning, whatever time it is that you are watching this. And we want you to invite Jesus into your life, not just into your heart, but into your life for him to take over everything. And this is not just saying a prayer just to make you feel good for the moment. But this prayer is to train, to change and transform your life and to move you from a place of separation from God to being in fellowship and relationship with God. So let's pray. Father, forgive me of my sins. I don't know where to start. I don't know what is going on in this world. I don't understand all the things that I am hearing. But Lord, I am coming to you. I'm giving you my life. Your word says that if I confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, that I will be saved. So God, I confess today and I believe in my heart. And because of this, your word says I'm saved. I confess my salvation right now in Jesus name. And so, Lord, we pray for those that have prayed that prayer. And we pray, God, that you would strengthen them, that you would fill them with your spirit, that you would cause them, oh God, to stand in you. And that, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them even in a greater way. That these things that we are sharing tonight and this afternoon and this morning, that these things that they are hearing will not provoke fear, but let them know that, God, that in you we live and we move and we have our being. You will never leave us. Neither will you forsake us. And so we pray for those that are watching. And we pray, God, that you will minister to their hearts and draw them closer to you, closer than they have ever been. We thank you for revealing yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Does anyone else want to share? Martin, you got something? You want to share yes, them? I, I just want to coming share to the with people that, you know, we we have two agendas in this world. We've got the, the agenda of the wicked ruler who um, goes about, um, you know, seeking to kill and destroy. And we've got the agenda of our heavenly father. But how we live out our lives as, as people of God um, either puts us in one camp or another or, or some people kind of try to straddle the live a crucified life, Jesus said, Cru you know, crucify the flesh daily, take up your cross daily. And so we need to choose. We need to choose what we feed on. And uh, we, I've got this Bible open, uh, Rev chapter, Revelations chapter 17, where it says, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and the abomination of the earth. Our media, our, our general media is such an abomination, has been for years. It's been feeding an agenda of not believing in God, an agenda of evolution and that there is no God. And it's been going on for years. And, you know, people of God, we've got to get our heads out of that, that cloud that's um, uh, clouding our thinking. We've got to get our heads and our hearts right into God. We've got to get into the intimacy that's been spoken of. And that means you've got to draw aside. You've got to draw aside and take time with God. Put those things of this world under your feet 
And as you draw aside and take time and take hold of the word, because everything we do in life revolves around words. Every thought re results in a word that we speak out and act upon. And so if we're filling our minds with the wrong thinking, the wrong words, then we're going to live out the wrong things. And we're seeing that come out day after day in the way the rules are being changed, the way we're being told that we have to accept LGBTQ and a whole bunch of other things. And it's, it's just a downhill slope. And the way up is to come out of it, come out of the abominations that, that this Babylon, which is uh, confusion, is bring, has brought to the world and stand with our feet firmly on the rock of Christ who, who speaks truth. And that's where the word of life, he said, uh, on this mountain, it, you know, there was a mountain of curses, a mountain of blessings going back in the Old Testament there. Um, choose life, he said to us. And so we choose life through the words that we choose to listen to in the first place, the words we choose to read, the things we choose to watch. And it's um, deeply on my heart that we capture this. This is where the reset works. This is what Tien spoke of earlier. And um, it's about aligning ourselves with the word of God, the word of truth, and, and putting aside the word of the world so that we can reset the, uh, the way our thinking works and then that flows into our world. And, and it's just a, a spiritual um, outworking. It's just the way God ha has made us, the way God works and how our lives work in this world. So I speak that in the name of Jesus to you out there and pray that you take hold, lay hold. I know the people that you're watching here on this broadcast are people who have put away the things of this world, taken hold of the word of God, the word of truth, and live their lives accordingly. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Gary, would you like, as we're coming to... Uh... A close of our program, Gary, would you like to share something? And then I will ask uh, Pastor Len if you will close in prayer after Gary shares something. Yeah, what I've found throughout my own life and what Jesus is saying now is that there is freedom in seeking judgment. When, we're, when somebody's arrested but hasn't been uh, convicted, He's held in a cell and he's bound. He doesn't know which way things are going to um, spin. But I found recently by asking God personally to judge me that I found true freedom. And for anybody that is impeded spiritually and physically, if they ask God to judge them now, then they will be set totally free. And there's no double jeopardy. You can only be judged for something once. And so if we all seek judgment now for every little thing, then truly we'll be set free because we'll know exactly where we've done wrong, why we've done wrong, more importantly, and how we've done wrong and how we're set free. And that is my plea for everybody to seek that judgment now because then they will truly see the kingdom of heaven in their life because they won't have a burden of guilt, shame and sin stopping them from moving forward because that's what the guilt is the biggest thing that stops us moving. So much of my prayer for everybody is that they seek that judgment now so they can be truly free. Mm, hallelujah. Seeking judgment now and then we'll receive the grace of God and the grace of God loving us and he's showing us that he has sent his son Jesus Christ to, to for, for the forgiveness of our sin. I see what you're saying there, Gary. When we're asking, when we are just laying down and and open our hearts to the Lord to show us everything, and He'll be able to show how much He loves us, and it's His love and His grace and His mercy that will set us free. Hallelujah, glory to God. I just want to 
think we're coming to a close now. I want to thank you all so, so much. It's been an awesome time. It's been a great time. Much has been said, much has been heard from the Lord, much has been spoken. There is just so much. I look forward to the time when this is finished and I've just got to go over and over and over and really hearing and really uh, take note of what God is saying. Because when we have programs like this and we're hearing what God is saying and we're requesting God to say to uh, uh, through his servant to speak to us and we were hearing so much and we do nothing about it, then we are not the sons of Issachar because the sons of Issachar heard, they knew the time and seasons and, and through the wisdom of God, they knew what to do. And I guess like uh, what's been spoken today, we heard what he has said, but then what is it our responsibility to do? And I just thank you so much for, for coming together. I thank you all for those who have been listening. I just want to bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you. I pray that this has been a, a, a great blessing to your life. I pray that there will be a, a shift that we've been talking about, um, a reset that we've been talking about, uh, a, a new day that we've been talking about. We pray that you uh, listen, listeners will hear and know what this reset, what this new day dawning, what this shift is, because God really wants us to be with him. He doesn't want anyone to be left behind in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, here's Lawrence, just pop in. Uh, Lawrence, you wanna say just, we're, we're just finishing off. So you just uh, say something to end off and then Pastor Lynn will close in prayer. Yeah, apologies, windows crashed as you'd expect. <laughs> Yes, um, with Gary, absolutely critical, Gary. Um, the prophetic word, the th message from the throne was, judge yourself, judge yourself and I will not judge you. Judge yourself and I will not judge you with the world because what's going on at the moment is the shaking of all things and the judging of the world system and the judging of the church. This is what's happening at the moment. This is a very critical time in the life of, of humanity on the planet and uh, the call is there and you're right Gary this is our lifestyle that we have to have it's called a repentant lifestyle as soon as you notice you've stepped out of line you judge yourself find yourself guilty repent that is turn around 180 degrees and face his way of doing it ask for forgiveness forgive yourself and move on and be about father's business apologies also um, that when uh, I mentioned about the Roaring Forties, when Tian gave that word, Roaring Forties is what I was given in my spirit, and I called the area of water below Australia the Roaring Twenties. It's not; it's the Roaring Forties. Um, but that it is the message. This is the time of shaking, uh, upheaval, so that everything will be manifest, and at the same time, the sons of God are being manifest because they are aligned with him. They have been reset. They have come out of the world system. They have come out of the religious system and they have reset and recalibrated themselves to align with heaven. So take heart, everyone. Take heart, all those who are in the secret place. You have been heard. You are a gem. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful ending. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Lane, would you close in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word has gone forth into the atmosphere, mm -hmm. the environment that is full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. My God, everyone that comes in contact to hear the authority of your word being spoken by your servant, the chosen word that have been spoken, we pray today that they will have an ear to hear what the Lord is saying to such an hour as this. Thank you for the opportunity to come and sit with this great man and woman of God from around the globe. It is indeed a great privilege and we honor you for this lovely opportunity. And for that, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 So, friend, 
Also, yes, we just trying to get the information so that I could put it on the screen, but I do I'm have sorry, I just um, um, so you see, we want to thank everybody. First, let's thank uh, Pastor Noah. We thank God for you. Thank God for all of everyone who is, uh, has joined us on today. Uh, we just honor the Lord for each one of you. And thank you for those of you, especially those of you who are here on the East Coast here in the U.S. and you are wide awake and and watching every word and, and interacting. We honor the Lord for you and all of you who are watching all over the world. We thank God for you. Just wanted to be able to share information because I, I want you to be able to reach out to uh, Pastor Noah. Uh, if you need to be able to reach out to her, we want you to be able to. Um, okay, so I have the Embassy of Hope email and then we also have noah dot, let me put this up here too we're gonna put this up here too so that if you would like to be able to contact her directly then you will be able to do so uh we want you to be able to reach out to her if you need information um if you want to ask about uh ministry information you know or whatever things that she may be doing you can contact her, her email is going across the screen and then you can also look up embassy of hope um, the website that's listed on the Facebook page, is that correct? That's right. Okay, so you can, it's H-T-T-P-S, it's Embassy of Hope, A-U-S-T dot Wixsite dot com forward slash Embassy of Hope, A-U-S-T. Here's the simplest way to do it. I want you to go to, I want you to go to Facebook. And I want you to look up Embassy of Hope on Facebook. And there you're going to be able to connect with all of these awesome leaders because all of them are on those pages as well. And so you'll be able to connect with them. We thank God for everybody on tonight. Thank y'all so much for partnering with us tonight to allow us to be able to share what God is saying and get the word of the Lord across the globe. And guess what? This is not the last time. This is not <laughs> going to be the last time. So I've already mm -hmm. spoken to Pastor Noah, Apostle Noah. And listen, she is going to be doing some work and broadcasting on a regular basis. So we're going to get her on here so she can do what God has given her to do to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we just thank God for all of you. And I see we lost her there. But bless the Lord for all of you. I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a blessed day afternoon evening morning daytime whatever time it might be where you are and where you're watching i pray that those of you who have watched that you have been blessed have a good day amen